Good morning, everybody. It's another day we're in the backyard. Right on schedule. It's gonna be a good day. We've had a very mild fall so far. It's actually been pretty nice. Winter starts on the 21st. And it doesn't even feel like it's getting close yet. I mean, it sure looks like it is to most of you, I'm sure. But believe me, this is still some nice weather. I sort of want to go to the beach. One scoop. Two scoop. Three scoop. You like the size of my scoops? Very impressive. Four scoop. I like it to knock my pants off, so. Another scoop. What was that? Five? Five scoop. Okay. Coffee. Coffee, coffee. So I don't know yet what we have planned for today. Uh, we're gonna go out, get out of the house a little bit. Yesterday we stayed inside all day, so today I wanna to sort of just get out and explore just a little bit. We'll see where life takes us. Huh. We have something very important to talk about. Look at me. Look at me in the eye, soldier. No, you gotta keep looking at me in the eye. Me in the eye. You have some explaining to do, man. People are starting to call you out for your crazy stories. I know. People are starting to wonder if these are true. I don't want to talk about it. All right, I was in the war, the milk bone war. It's all true. Well, Diesel and I figured we'd go for a bit of a drive today, get out of the house, get a little bit of fresh air. See what's going on on this beautiful Saturday. It's only minus two outside, so it's not that cold yet. You know, it could be a lot colder. Most Decembers have been a lot colder than this. And what's weird is I, I saw that Oklahoma and Kansas got a whole bunch of snow the other day. I think they flipped weather systems with us. <laughs> I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> we have friends down uh, in Southwest Kansas and uh, I saw pictures on Facebook from, uh, from around their area there and how much snow they got. I don't know if that's normal for them to get that much snow, but I guess every year is different. You know, some years we get a lot of snow here. Some years we got barely anything. I can still remember having a brown Christmas not too long ago. No snow at all. And then there was the Christmases in other years where we had like four feet of snow. <laughs> so I don't know. It doesn't matter what the weather does. People are going to say that something bigger than that is happening, you know. I don't know what's going on. That's my motto nowadays. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just trying to get through life one day at a time. Yeah, that truck is almost exactly like mine, except he's got the lift kit on it. Maybe one day we'll get our lift kit for this truck, but I'm in no rush. I like the way the truck is now. Nowadays, I'm just like, you know what? I think the engineers that built these vehicles knew, knew what they were doing. And I, I think that they put every piece together 
so that it works exactly how it was intended to work. You know, you start adding modifications and aftermarket parts and uh, you know, pretty soon you got other problems that uh, you wouldn't have had otherwise, you know? I wouldn't mind having a leveling kit and exhaust on my truck, but I think that's about as far as I'd go. I mean, I can't say for sure. Maybe my mind will change. My mind seems to change all the time. But, nah, I've never put a big lift kit on my truck. Ah. Uh, First of all, it voids all the warranty that you have left on the truck. And second, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like I could find different ways to spend my money. <laughs> oh, my blooming art is getting traffic lights. Oh, oh, wow, this place is moving up in the world. Look at that. They got a new sign. They got new traffic lights. These are much needed already. Come on, bud. Go. There you go. Put that fart in gear. That is really awesome. Man, Niverville got some lights. Blue and North got some lights. Wow. Diesel, Southeast Manitoba. We are happening now. So yeah, Blue and North, Manitoba. All right, where this uh, Peterbilt dealership is, or I don't know if it's a dealership, but uh, they got a big Peterbilt sign anyways. Used to be PBX. I'm not sure if it still is or not. I, I think so. Oh, yeah, see, they're adding on there. It is still PBX, Peterbilt. Huh. So they, are they a dealership? Oh, well, Mr. Ford wants to go check it out, too. Okay, here's this... Uh, cab over we were looking at the other day anyway you guys want to go take a look at it again I'm pretty sure it is for sale see they got this big Peterbilt sign here but I don't see any I mean I guess there's a few new Pete's over there but they're mostly used trucks here yeah, this guy here he's got that lift axle in the front there Ooh, it's looking pretty rough See, that's one reason I don't like steel rims. It can rust out like that. But it happens, right? It happens. Here she is. Mm, she is for sale. I'd love to go inside and take a look. But... From what I could gather from the comment section, a lot of you guys are interested in... Uh, cab overs too. I'll see if I can lift you up. Can you see in there? Not bad, eh? Though uh, most of you said the same thing I always think whenever I see a cab over. You know, when you're driving a cab over, you're always the first one to the scene of the accident. And it is a pretty rough ride because your steering axle is right beneath your seat. But I do have a question for you, you truckers out there. Maybe livestock haulers? Are any of you livestock haulers? Do you like it? Are you home pretty often? I know you guys usually drive pretty nice trucks. I mean, the bull haulers are always the ones flying down the highway at 110, right? There's a big company here in Blumenort that hauls cattle and pigs and called Steve's Livestock and they're very well known. I believe they're the largest uh, largest livestock hauler in Western Canada. Like, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure anyways. They're not the only one here either. I mean, there's also High Life based out of Brokery. Both have really good reviews and people seem to really love working for them. This trailer's blue. Why is this one blue? I guess the amount of work that goes into it. I know it's like a, it's a lot more work than just hauling dry vans, that's for sure. But I'd love to hear from actual livestock haulers what you guys think of it. Not necessarily considering doing it myself, but I mean it's, it's I mean it's always an option, right? This is their wash bay here. This is a huge complex. But you know, you're, 
they usually, I believe, are home every few days. I don't know, that's why I'm asking you guys. How often do you guys get home? I know I don't really need to keep repeating myself that uh, I've sort of felt the need to be home more recently, but at the same time, you know, a trucker is a trucker. We're always truckers. And I'm always looking for options and opportunities where I can still drive, yet still be home. I'd like to be home every night, but honestly, being a truck driver, you know that that's not always possible. I mean, you're usually gone for at least a couple of nights, right? And someone told me once that livestock hauling, uh, you're usually gone about two to three nights at a time. See, if I can have my weekends at home, like even hauling grain and feed, like there's companies in Steinbeck that call grain, and they get their drivers home most weekends. That would even be all right, you know? It's just then I can't take diesel with me, especially if I'm hauling livestock. Can't take diesel because uh, they don't allow dogs in the trucks at that time or at that point. It's uh, health and safety, food and food and health safety regulations. So these are the streets of Blumenschnort or Blumenort for the civilized people. <laughs> it's actually a really nice town. Small little Mennonite heritage town near Steinbach. Spent uh, a lot of time. Well, that house I showed you last time, like last week, my house where I grew up, was just a little ways down the road from here. So I spent a lot of time in town here. A lot of I had a lot of friends in town here. Pretty much my best friends all lived in this area at that time. And then I started going to school in Winnipeg. Nice little quiet community. A lot of truckers. A lot of truckers in our area. In our area, in the southeast, for the most part, a majority of people are a large amount of people. Either you're a truck driver or you're a farmer. Those are your two big options. There's a whole bunch of other jobs and stuff as well. But uh, those are your big options. So tempting to do a fishtail. So tempting I held myself back. I was a good boy. So I do want to hear from you truckers that are home on a more regular basis. Like, I guess what I'm mostly tired of is not having a set schedule. Like, I want to be able to tell people, yes, on the weekend and this date, I'll be there. Oh, you're getting married on this date? I'll be there. Oh, you want to get together for a barbecue on this date? I'll be there. You know, I, I don't want this... I'm tired of having a schedule that's not uh, for certain. That, that was one of the big reasons uh, I'm changing things up. So, if you have a job driving a truck, doesn't matter where you're from, what kind of stuff do you haul? What kind of work do you do where you can be home on the weekends... Or like regular, maybe dedicated routes. Maybe that would work. I've never had a dedicated route before. But... Or maybe you do something locally. So Blue Manor is behind me right now. Just off to my left and behind me. I used to ride my bike down this road all the time to go to school. Because the house where we lived is a mile down here, right where that truck is. Oh, the fisheye lens is too far away, you can't see it. But about a half mile down from here, you turn right and you go down that road for a mile and you get to our old house. So it would be about a two mile bike ride for me to get to school. And uh, sometimes my mom would bike with me to school to make sure I got there safely and then bike home. And then she'd bike all the way back at the end of school to bike back home with me to make sure I got home safe. So she'd do it twice in a day. Wouldn't do that every day, but I still remember that. That was so much fun. And the main highway is just off to our right over there. So this highway was always nice and quiet for us to bike down, right? We always had this, this old Friesen Drillers tower. Friesen Drillers moved into Steinbeck now, but this is where their headquarters used to be. And this tower was always our landmark. It's a uh, turn east at the Friesen Driller tower. Now it's something else, but they left the tower there, but the F fell off at one point. Hope it didn't hit anybody on the way down. <laughs> now it says Reason. Turn right at the Reason Tower. Or I guess in English it would be the Reisen. But in German, when you have IE, it makes an E sound. So like Reason. Unless if it's like Reimer, then it's EI makes an I sound. Reimer. Friesen. See, IE in German would make an E sound, and EI makes an I sound. Reimer. EI. Friesen. IE. And we go across the street here, carefully crossing the big highway, and a mile down here. That's where we lived. 
I guess now everyone here picks their mail up here on the right, but back in the day, they would bring the mail right to our driveway. That was always nice. Another question I got for all you livestock haulers out there. How come you always got the nicest trucks? <laughs> Is there a lot of money in bull hauling and pig hauling? Because it seems like whenever you have a, a bull hauler coming up with you, they got like a thousand chicken lights and a nice long hood on a 389 or a W900. They always have the nicest trucks and they're always driving so fast. So are they on like a tight time schedule? Or why are they going so fast? Slow down a little, I wanna see your fancy trucks. <laughs> Whenever you see a big truck coming up in your mirror and you see them coming up hot, guaranteed, 95% chance, it's a livestock truck. They're always just hauling everywhere they go, just giving her. Why? <laughs> What's the rush? Must be nice, I guess because the livestock haulers out here, they don't go into Ontario. Because if you go into Ontario, you're limited to 105 kilometers an hour. You have to have your truck governed. That's 65 mile an hour. And Quebec, the same thing. So even if you come visit, if you're coming up from the U.S., your truck has to have a limiter on at 65 mile an hour. Or you're getting a big ticket if you get caught. You get pulled into the first inspection station, they'll plug in, and if they don't see a speed limiter on there, boom, you're getting a ticket, you're getting shut down right there. you got to call the mechanic to come do a service call and put a limiter on your truck right there at the scale. So a little heads up for you, a little friendly heads up. <laughs> There's another truck driver there. Looks like he's just getting home. A lot of truck drivers in this area. I always enjoyed those routes. You know when I went back on dry van, I'm talking about how I missed those routes. I really do. I love going out there. I just, I hate that it takes me away for so long, you know. But, uh, you know. If you want to do the job, you just got to suck it up, right? And just get it done. Or, you know, just because I love the job doesn't mean that uh, I don't love other things in my life more. But I'll probably be hopping back in a truck in the new year. If not sooner, but probably in the new year of January, February. I'm not sure which truck or what I'll be hauling, but... Uh, I have a feeling that you can't keep this trucker out of a truck. I've just got to find a truck that gets home a little more often, that's all. It's hard because local jobs, they usually do pay less. And it, that's the balance you got to find, right? You want to be home more, you're going to get paid less, usually. You want to be gone more, you want to explore, you want to see the continent, well, you're probably going to get paid more. But I've seen the whole continent, I've seen everything. I loved it, I had a lot of fun doing it, but I think it's just that season in my life where I just wanna be home a little bit, more, a little bit more. And I think in the new year, whether it's December now, January, beginning of February, I'll probably uh, hop back in a truck. Maybe I'll haul grain. But today I want to know about livestock hauling. Is that something I should look into seriously? Is that something that would be a good career for me? Would that be something that would get me home more often? And is it enjoyable or is it miserable? I mean, you guys usually do get to drive some pretty nice trucks. I want to know. I know there's a couple of you in my, in my uh, comment section there. 
Let me know how you like it. And if you don't like it, let me know why. Okay, give me the pros and cons of livestock hauling. I'm gonna go through the comments and see what you guys have to say. Maybe we'll go towards that. So I'll see what you guys have to say. And maybe tomorrow, we can make a video sort of centered around all of the pros and cons that you guys have shared with me about livestock hauling. And we can dive into it a little bit deeper. Speaking of weather though, look at this. The snow is all melting. What is it today? December something? December 5th, 2020. The snow is all melting on the road. Plus two outside. That's amazing. That's probably what, 40 Fahrenheit, somewhere in there? And this isn't our coldest month yet. You gotta remember January, February are our coldest months. Usually second week, the, the, the last two weeks of January, first two weeks of February are the worst. There it usually gets down to about minus 50 for a couple of weeks. And it really tests out how much you love Manitoba. <laughs> and all the people who can't handle it, well, have fun in Toronto or Vancouver with all the expensive housing. <laughs> Check this out, a cab over. 